Welcome, everyone, on Daylight Savings Day. I'm especially grateful for everyone who is here today and not in bed going, ay! <laughs> um, so the messages I'm going to share today are not quite 100% in exact accordance with spiritualism, but <clears throat> they're not in disaccordance. What I ask is take whatever I share with you and apply whatever resonates with wherever you feel it goes well. And if the words I say sound like a nice fable or a children's story, then that's great as well because I believe we are each on our path and building our personal mission with life. Um, so we all know that our planet is changing right now. There's climate change. The environment is changing. Um, as some animals are going towards extinction, there are other life forms that are evolving at a rapid rate on the ocean floor, uh, near Antarctica, um, in some of the deep jungles in like Borneo and the um, Amazon rainforest, um, and high up in northern Canada, there are new life forms that right now, some of them are microbial, but they're evolving. So our planet is once again, I guess we're becoming dinosaurs as we're going through, going through the other direction. With, But humanity is also evolving. We look at the rapid increase of like autism spectrum, you know, like to be personal, my son has uh, diagnoses of high-functioning autism, Asperger's, ADHD, and a tic disorder, which means he is extremely brilliant. He's got like an IQ of 185. He's got the social skills of a six-year-old. Um, he's got the organizational skills of a nine-year-old. And um, he sees how everything fits together. He's totally a big-picture kid. Um, he's just amazing to talk to so long as you want to talk on a very high level or talk about Pokemon, but not much in between. Uh, and he still doesn't understand the importance of finishing his homework and handing it in when he understands the material so its purpose has been served. I, and yet he wants to go to a good college. <laughs> so, But these children are popping up everywhere. Ten years ago, there was a lot of debate on is there an increase in these children or... Is it just now becoming acknowledged? And now we're saying, yes, there is an increase in this. Um, and we're also looking at an increase in you know, fertility issues with women. There's like lots of things that are changing that a decade ago were debated, and now we're like, and why is this happening? People say, well, it's because the environment is changing. We have toxins, we have pollutants, we have like junk food that we think is regular food. Whatever the source, it's still triggering changes, and things are changing. So I mention this because it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> changes change. It's not good or bad. I mean, it's good for some, it's bad for others, but it's change. You know, anytime we have change, there's a potential for connecting with the change and making it awesome. You know, if I need to do spring cleaning in my home, I have the potential to do the minimal amount and leave dust in places I don't see, or I have the potential to like completely redecorate. It's up to me. And we have that potential on our planet right now. Um, so I receive messages, um, you know, with mediumship. There's different, what's called lower realm, higher realm, which is not like a grading structure. It's what level of vibration. There's people who connect with those who have passed. And, you know, you have some amazing mediums in this room. I have a tendency to receive messages from uh, what's called the higher vibration. So I'm kind of useless if you want to contact your dead aunt. But I'm very useful if you want to talk to an angel. Uh, which so I've been receiving a lot of messages about why, what we can do about the changes. It's not so much why are changes happening because asking why after the fact is silly. But when something is happening, you can say, what, what can we make of this? 
And I wanted to share some of these messages with you today because I feel they transcend any thought of the origin source of them. Um, so the other month we had the Women's March, and I don't know how many of you all were involved in that in any form. Um, I marked my wellness center, yes. We brought a whole group there. And I'll tell you, my parents are activists. My mother's cousin is Pete Seeger, you know, and Peggy and Mike Seeger as well. So whenever there was a protest in, I grew up in McLean, whenever there was a protest in D.C. during the Vietnam War Watergate era, of which it was basically every week, um, <laughs> Pete Seeger, the Clearwater Gang, Brother Kurt Johnson, Don McLean, Bob Dylan, all these people would stay at our house because we had, my parents lived in the woods. There'd be like all these activists camping out in our backyard and we'd all go to DC together. And my parents were very involved with organizing, you know, marches and campaigns. For me, Sunday was go to church in the morning, hop on a bus, go to a protest march. And then <laughs> take the bus back to church and go home. That's what I thought Sundays were like for, like, every kid in America. Uh, so I know protest marches. I have never seen anything like the Women's March. We arrived there. It took us, like, an hour just to get on the metro at Falls Church East. And I was like, that's amazing. For the first time, no one can get on the metro, and everyone's happy about it. You know? <laughs> We finally squeezed in, and we're all like this. And everyone's like, yay, it's a cattle car. <laughs> and then when we got to the march, which was about, I guess it was supposed to start at 10. We got to around 1030, and the march was at 3rd and I. We were at, like, the closest we could get was, like, seven blocks away. It was packed. And within a half hour of our arriving, the 10 blocks behind us were packed out. You know, I've, and then... The roads parallel on either side were packed out. What I found out later um, was, like, my mother was in a small mountain village in Mexico, and she went to, they were supposed to have a, you know, an event in the village square. So in this tiny mountain village in Mexico, 2,000 people showed up to support the Women's March. Every single city in the world, every single city, including in Muslim nations, people showed up to support the Women's March. And in many small towns and villages as well, people who couldn't get out invited friends to their homes. They were live streaming it. So this was literally a global event. And in the entire world, there was no act of violence associated with the march, and there were only three arrests. That is like... So this was literally a new stage in humanity for such a thing to occur. And what do you hear everywhere? It's like, hey, when's the next march? When's the next? Ooh, there's a science march coming up. Ooh, there's a climate change march. There's, you know, like, we're, we're getting into this. Why is it at this time in our lives this is happening? The messages I'm receiving are that humanity is coming together to become one peaceful collective. And this was the first step for humanity to start raising our vibration and come together as one peaceful planet. I, I start crying whenever I think of this. The idea of war and anger and poverty becoming old school and love and compassion becoming the new vibration that humanity chooses to live within to me, this is something I am greedy for as much as I can get. Um, so the messages that I receive, this is where take it as parable or whatever fits for you, let it fit. And whatever doesn't, just enjoy the beauty of it. Um, when I channel angels and light bringers, um, I was given a story that in the beginning of all everything, there was nothing. And then there was one thing. And this one thing was a divine masculine, divine feminine, a twin flame of one. 
And when they met and they came together, their pure love was so powerful, in one moment it created everything. And everything was created from one moment of divine love, which means everything and everyone in existence is love. And I was told you could go to the most foul demon in the deepest pit of hell and inside that demon there will be a little ember still of love that there is no evil all there is is those who have separated from their consciously separated from their love they've lost their connection to love and if they can be healed if they can be reminded look inside yourself look at that little ember of light let it flame up They will remember, I am a being of love. And they will remember they have families that miss them, that they have families on higher planes or other realms or different vibrations or frequencies that are calling for them to come back and be reclaimed and healed and return to their light state. Everything came from love, and everything in its core is love, including our politicians. But I feel like it's easier to help an energetic demon return to love than some of our politicians. <laughs> but it's important to remember that the way you combat hate, darkness, evil is through love. Because the more everyone returns to their state of love, the more our state of humanity can rise up in vibration. So how do we do that? I have people who say, Benita, I've been practicing the Hawaiian act of ho'oponopono on the politicians every last three months, and I don't see anything happening. Like, well, the Hawaiian ho'oponopono is an amazing, beautiful, like, is anyone here familiar with this? Okay. This is such a beautiful healing prayer, Uh, you know, a, a mantra, basically where you connect with someone energetically and you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I thank you, I love you. And you repeat this as a mantra over and over till this person is healed. Um, The thing is, you can't have any ego involved with it. You must truly believe and live and experience the words as you're saying them. As with any mantra, you can go, om, om, all you want, but if you're not in the state of this beautiful chant, you're just making a sound. It's very difficult for most of us to put our ego aside to someone that we do not love, that we do not thank, and say, I thank you, I love you, please forgive me, you know, I'm sorry. So it's best to practice any of your healing on those that you know you can affect. And this is the word that I'm getting, that if I spread my love through this room, and I do. I share my love with all of you, and you, everyone here. You can take my love and your love and go out and spread it to those that you see and you meet and that you think about because, of course, we're all connected. We're all connected energetically. And then those people can go out and spread their love. And what you'll find is like some of your friends are just like truly pure beings and some of your friends maybe not so pure, and, the, you know, but they all go out to their friends who are more pure. And, and eventually, some of those friends will be like people who work with the politicians and people who work with mobsters and people who work with Department of Defense and Pentagon, and love will start spreading through there until eventually the people who are resistant to love will find they're just surrounded by an entire planet of love and light. And those closest to them, you know, their family, their dearest friends, their coworkers are sending love and light to them, and that's when they will feel it. So if sending love and light out there is exhausting you, then send to someone that makes you feel complete and let those people send it. And believe me, it will spread, it will spread. And when there's any opportunity you have to go out there and claim an act of love, Like for me, the Women's March was just a day filled with love. Now, I know there were many people there who were there from anger, 
But it doesn't matter why people were there. They showed up there, and they got filled with the energy of it. They took that energy home and spread it. So whatever motivation someone has for getting to a place of love and light and caring and compassion, that's less relevant. What's relevant is once they're there, they're getting hit with that energy, and they take it with them. So at this time with our planet going through a state of evolution, we who care about love and light have a chance to step in and truly shine our energy and spread our light and connect with others, become active. You know, the um, Tibetan monks, uh, several years ago I had a chance to spend um, you know, a, a bit of time with them. And we had some, for them, normal, for me, extraordinary conversations. Uh, I was there with uh, my friend Bloom, who is the most extraordinary mindfulness meditator I've ever met. And <laughs> Bloom will hold his point of view with anyone, including Tibetan monks, apparently. So, <laughs> so we were talking, and the, the monks were saying whenever they pray, they don't pray for themselves. When they meditate, they don't meditate for themselves. It's for the good of others. It always comes through them and goes out to others. And Bloom's like, that's a waste. Why should I care about others when I can just fill myself with good stuff and that's good enough for me? And they said, because it's a waste when you don't spread it out. If you just bring it in for yourself, you will always deplete your energy. Um, now, Bloom, of course, came from New York City. So <laughs> he came from a slightly different dynamic where he was always surrounded by a cacophony of energy. And so he learned to just create a tube that was for himself and just for himself. But the Tibetan monk said, so many people take care of them that they keep their vibration up very high. And in order to do that, other people handle a lot of the busy work, the paperwork, the this and that. And they get surrounded by people who need love, who need light. They created an energetic um, mandala of energy surrounding the planet to send love and light through to the whole planet. And they said, any time any of us wish, we can make ourselves feel pure within our hearts and souls, and we can connect to their mandala of love and light. And then when we send love and light out, and it's connected with theirs, it is magnified, you know, a thousandfold, a millionfold, and has an even greater impact. And it's so joyous for our being, and it's also so joyous for their being because they can feel that we're connecting with them. So they have encouraged all of us, don't feel you need to be in isolation um, and just bring energy through to you, like directly into the planet. Feel welcome to connect energetically. Meditate with friends, you know, as we are today. Do things that fill your heart with love and delight and then reach out to others and connect with the energetic networks that are out there. If you need to learn techniques of meditation, there are places where you can do that and then you're like, oh, that opens me up so much more. This is all wonderful. And don't feel like you're being selfish, like you need to go out there and do things that exhaust you to make a change and it's selfish for you to take care of yourself. Don't feel that way feel like if you take care of yourself and you're sending the energy out, then you are caring for the planet. And we can evolve our planet to its next stage of gracious being. Um, I've been given visions of future Earth. It's really amazing. It's really beautiful with humanity living in harmony with the planet. And our psychic skills are all much higher. We have the ability to affect even gravity so that, and we're, our homes are basically one with nature, which I've, I've been told, like, in Japan and certain places, they're actually starting to do that, which to me is, like, wonderful. But there is a beautiful possible vision that we can get to if we start filling ourselves completely with love and connecting. So if we could take one moment to just relax the top of your head, your crown chakra, let the top of your head feel light and tingly. If you're feeling any pressure or pain, that's just 
your crown trying to open up. Relax and let it open so the top of your head feels very light. And let all the beautiful energies of the cosmos and divine love flow into your head and fill your mind and flow down through your throat and your shoulders and fill your heart and your lungs. Flow down into your body, your organs, your spine. Flow down your arms, your elbows and wrists and forearms into your hands, the palms of your hands, your fingertips. The webbing between your fingers can feel energized in the backs of your hands, like your hands are becoming balls of beautiful love and light. Feel the energy flowing down your spine and your hips, your tailbone, down through your legs, your thighs and knees, your calves and shins, ankles. Feel the energy flowing down through your feet, deep into earth, where our divine mother absorbs your energy and sends it as love and light through the planet. Feel the love flowing through your heart. Sending the love with each beat of your heart through your veins and arteries into every cell of your body. And feel the love flowing into your lungs. And each breath you take sends love oxygen into your body, also to every cell of your body, filled with love, divine joy and delight. And allow this energy to just emanate from you like the brightest light bulb of love and joyous bliss. And whenever you focus on the top of your head, allow it to become more relaxed. and more filled with the light tingles of energy flowing through your being. Remember this feeling and you can return to the state of being anytime you wish just by taking a moment to relax the top of your head and let the energy flow. And remember that whenever you radiate this energy, all around you can feel it. And that allows them, whether they're aware of it or not, to relax the tops of their heads and let the energy flow. And at this moment, you can feel how connected we all are in this room. We are each individuals, and together we are one. We've become a collective for the moment. Each sharing divine light, love, the energy of bliss and joy.
which is all the more special because we're sharing it in this beautiful divine space. to return to this room and this space. Reclaim our individual natures. But you can feel we are still connected. And as we each go through our day, you will carry with us the strength and the beauty of this connection that we shared. Thank you. We have some more singing coming up, things where we need to have a little more vibrance of being. So everyone take one deep breath, breathe in. Maybe wiggle your shoulders a little bit. Let's return to this beautiful space. Thank you so much. It is such an honor to be here. Thank you.